<clears throat> Next up, I'd like to bring a friend of my dad's, who's not a part of the family, but he's part of my family, uh, Mike Patrick. Can we have you come up? Yeah, we're going to do that at the end. It's on my computer. So we'll find it at the end. Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm a bit different because I, I, I met Ron later in life, and we just kind of like danced in and out a little bit of, of our lives. We, we weren't like very tight or anything, but I'll tell you how I met him. I, I was a journalist for the Bridgeport then the Bridgeport Post, and uh, they had asked me to do a story about the state of comics today, comic strips. And uh, I called up uh, Bob Weber. He had a studio in Westport, I think it was, and uh, um, just I just cold called him. Hey, you're Bob Weber, the cartoonist? Said, yeah, I am. I said, so I, he invited me to this lunch. He said, there's a lot of cartoonists come to this lunch uh, at a Chinese restaurant, and uh, so I went there. And I interviewed a bunch of cartoonists. Orlando was there, and uh, Jerry Marcus was there. It was great, and they were, you know, Big Bob, they called him Big Bob. Big Bob would tell jokes, and people would laugh, and Rod would intentionally not laugh. Um, and uh, <laughs> just, just to kind of get, because they, they were good friends, he and Bob, and just to get his goat. And uh, so I get, I get all my notes and my story and stuff, and I thank everybody, I get up to leave, and, and Ron turns to Big Bob and he says, I never want to see that a-hole again. <laughs> and I, uh, I kept going. And I think that's kind of like the only way, the, other than a share of a love for comics, um, the only thing that uh, I share with, with uh, Ron is that we grow on you, you know? And, uh, and, and we grew on each other. Um, I kept going to those lunches and he kept, you know, looking at me, you know, like that, and uh, um, and this this went on for for a year or so. And uh, one day, the conversation turns to fantasy novels. Surprise, right? Um, and we're talking about uh, a uh, a fantasy writer named Raymond E. Feist, and he's not here, is he? Okay. Um, so Raymond E. Feist uh, is a you know popular. Uh, novelist and uh, Ron said he didn't like him. I, I, I don't like that. I don't like his writing. I, don't, I just don't like this guy at all. And I said, and people were like talking about him. Someone turns to me and said, "What do you think of, of, of Raymond E. Feist?" And uh, to, I said, "To be honest, and it was true." I said, I've, "I've tried reading his books a couple of times. I just can't get through them." And, and Ron turned to me, and it was like his heart melted. <laughs> <laughs> we hate the same guy. <laughs> and. And, uh, and, and we, we connected after that, and, and I kept going to the lunches, and, 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 he, would, and he warmed up to me, and I warmed up to him, and, uh, and it, was a, it was a nice relationship, and, and um, I, was, I was younger than all those guys, I, I'm kind of an old soul, and, and one of the troubles when you're an old soul is you, when you befriend all these older folks, they, they, they start to go, and, and uh, one by one, Big Bob, and Jerry Marcus, and Orlando, they all, they all went. And uh, Ron was one of the last of the, of the crew. And uh, a couple of years ago, he sent me an email. And, and Sean said you know, that, that uh, you know, his father very rarely sent any emails at all. And he was actually quite surprised that I got this. I wanted to read a, a part of it to you. Um, Because it, it, this came after Sean uh, had stopped by his dad and said, hey, you know, Mike Patrick said hi. Yeah. And so, uh, so he wrote me this. He goes, Mike, my elder son tells me you just immortalized the admirable Henry in your scandal sheet. Um, I had written a story about Henry the dog for the newspaper that I worked for. He said, the lunch group has dwindled since you last sat in. Walt Needham, who I'm not sure you met, passed away a year ago tomorrow, and he was one of the real attractions. I know I miss him. Orlando and Ann think it's too far to go, and they don't much care for Asian Easter Fair. Bob Weber and I usually get together on Saturday at noon at the Tango, the one at 1330 Post Road East, as we will be doing this coming Saturday. Sometimes a couple of other chaps pop in. Lowell Hess is residing in a rest home in New Jersey, and so it goes. When I mentioned to Bob that you contacted me on Facebook, he suggested me invite you to join us. Your wife is welcome, but be prepared for Bob to ask her if he might hug her. <laughs> and 
then, then he goes on to say, you know, here's his home phone number and stuff if I ever want to, you know. Uh, I've got around 40 of my old books selling at various internet posts as ebooks, books on demand. Uh, perhaps you could do a follow-up piece and say that Henry likes to curl up with one each evening. <laughs> Give a call or email, and if you can't make lunch, we can try some other venue. Your pal, Rob. And uh, it meant the world to me. I, honest, honest to goodness, uh, it, uh, you know, from from my first meeting and uh, him and uh, to that that last email conversation that I have with him, it meant the world. So that's what I have to say. I went to for advice on any subject at all. I wasn't embarrassed to talk to my father about anything. He was a genius level person and uh, emotionally incredibly deep and would really listen to what you had to say. My father was into all sorts of art forms. Um, it's one of the things that got me into music and art myself, uh, this deep appreciation of people who are trying to show emotions and share stories and feelings. I always remember my father playing music, as did our whole house. Um, There's typically three different kinds of music playing at all times, if not more. My father's impact is still resonating uh, with Myself and I know my family. Um, just two days ago, I had another conversation about my father's work um, with a stranger who's got very excited. And um, this happens all the time. People love my father and love the work he did. Uh, I hope it continues on. Uh, bigger than life character. Um, he was a genius, and I've not met a lot of geniuses on the planet. Um, and when you really got to know him and talk, you, you really saw the levels and depth that he had. Um, I hope you get that through his work. My father um, also put all of his family members in his books, which I didn't realize for a while, um, throughout all of his stories and um, all of his work. You would see um, us throughout our characters, the way we acted. Um, and I didn't know that for a while, but he pointed out to me many times. and. That was a, another way that he showed his love for the people he actually loved on this planet. I know that his work speaks volumes, but he was obviously deeper than that and an extremely loving and generous man. And I miss him deeply, as do I know my mother and my brother. Because I can't possibly share everything about my father. He's a deeply loving, caring person who was a genius. And the stories are many, but he loved his work, he was passionate about life, and I miss him, as I know my brother and mother do. I want to thank everybody that's there in support of my father, and my brother Sean, my mother Francis. I know they really appreciate your support, and my father would have loved seeing you all there, supporting him. Continue to read his work and love him. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Stephen. Okay, so um, everyone has seen a, a very small percentage, probably <laughs> half of 1% of my dad's work on this back table. Um, and one of the things that my dad did was all these sketches, right? As everybody's seen these sketches. And, and you know, I, as I've told many of you today, um, I just didn't really realize he was doing all these things. <laughs> Like, you know, we would go to like IHOP or something and he'd flip the menu over and he'd have a pen, because he always had like four pens, you know. And uh, and he would draw, he would do these little sketches, and then you know, we would just leave. So it's not like we 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 picked them up and went, oh great, let's take this home and frame it. It was just like that goofy thing that dad does every time we go out. <laughs> so uh, after he passed, you know, my mom starts coming up with all these these sketchbooks, and you know, it's not just one or two, right? There's hundreds of these, right? And they are hand colored and hand done. Most of them are initialed by my dad. So what I'd like is if everyone who's interested could take one of these sketches, just pick one that you like. You know, none of the ones where my mom is naked and I don't want to get out of those. <laughs> but the other ones, yeah. And because my dad wanted his work to be out there, right? And when this is over, that work is going to go back in a box. And that's not where I want it to be, you know? 
So I know that it might be difficult for you to think, oh, the poor guy's dad just passed and now he's trying to give me a drug. But if you see, it's just as much for me as it is for you, you know, that you showed enough to come today and my dad made those things so people could see them. Right, so like I said, I, I want to thank everybody for coming, and uh, you know it's been a long time to sit through all this, and um, but I would feel really nice if everybody took one of the drawings home, whether you put it in a drawer or whether you tack it up on the wall in the basement or whether you frame it and put it on the wall in the living room doesn't matter, you know. And if you if you don't want it, give it to somebody else who might like it, and tell them about this guy Ron Gallard who who drew it, you know. But um, on that note, thank you very much for coming, and God bless you.